Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 308. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel and click on my college website link and you can download the workbook, Magic Trick 307 to 315. Hey, in this video, we want to see how to extract some records from a different workbook with a formula. I'm going to switch over to this other workbook. It just I have some data here. Control Home brings me back to A1. And I want to extract certain records based on certain criteria. Control Tab is the keyboard shortcut to move between open Excel workbooks. Control Tab. But there it is. I want to start here and I want to do it with a formula. Now I've done lots of videos with about extracting records. Uh, with formulas where we go do it all in the same workbook. I've also done it with advanced filter. But this is going to be a formula that's looking into another Excel workbook and extracting it. First thing I need to do is count. And I have, a, um, there's, I have another strange uh, part of this. Uh, this spreadsheet has a little drop down and we have to select the month. And it has a little drop down that selects the year. <clears throat> but if you look up in the formula you can see that 06 is really not in the cell that's done with uh, custom number formatting. So we're going to have to use the text function to put these together to get a date we can match with uh, this column right here. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to use the sum product to count records that are from August and 06, the year 06 over here, to count how many that we need to extract. I'm going to use sum product. Uh oh, equals sum product. Um, I equals sum product. And I'm actually going to use a, a double negative uh, to convert the trues and falses to zeros and ones so I can add them with the sum product. And uh, I've used double negative more and more as time gone on. I used to use multiplying a lot with sum product to get trues and falses to ones and zeros. But uh, after reading some papers and doing some uh, timing of formulas, double negative is faster. That's why you see it a lot. That's why lots of people use it. Here's the true false. We're going to have to say text. And first I need to get this. So I'm going to say uh, this cell right here, comma, and I have to do a custom number format here in double quotes, 0, 0. That is just a way of adding a leading 0, um, even if there isn't one there. So that. And I have to ampersand and get this. Now, right now, if you were to highlight just this right here and hit the F9 key to evaluate, you see it's 06 August. That'll come in handy later because we're going to have to do a custom number format on the whole range over there and put the year first and the month. Control Z. I'm actually going to lock these because I'm going to copy this. Even though in this cell it doesn't need to be locked, I'm going to copy part of this formula and use it later because this is going to be a big, huge chunk here that we can use later. So I have that, and I see, need to say, is that equal to text? But now I need to go get that other column in that other workbook. So I'm going to view, or however you do it, get over to that other workbook. Click in cell A1. You can see the formula um, um, start to emerge here. This is a workbook reference, and I have a few videos on those. But there's a single apostrophe there and there around square brackets. That tells you inside the square brackets is the file name, sheet name uh, associated with those little uh, single quotes, and explanation point. That means the sheet. And then by default, these cell references for sheet for workbook references always come up absolute. We're actually going to need to change that. Um, I'm actually going to highlight this once again. Click right there. It puts it in Control Shift Down Arrow, and now I'm going to hit F4. Um, actually, we're going to keep it locked. We do need it locked. All right, and now we need to. That's the whole range, and we need to comma because we're inside the text function, right? You can see this screen tip right here. Comma and the custom number format, as we mentioned earlier, is going to be YYMMM because that's the way we set it up in the other one. We could have done it in reverse, but then we'd have to do MMM year year. Close parentheses. We're going to close parentheses on the text. This double negative. This this will give us a string of trues and falses. Are uh, 
the dates that we've picked as criteria in this column right here. It gives us trues and falses. And then that double negative inside the sum product, uh, the double negative will turn it to zeros and ones. The sum product will add them. I'm going to hit Control Enter. Did something wrong because there should be more than. Uh, oh, yeah, no, that's right. That's right. Uh, we need to change this to nine because there aren't any. So, for example, in August, there's uh, 31. In um, September, there is 30. All right, uh, I'm going to actually copy this. Uh, so we have an absolute, an absolute, everything's absolute. I'm going to copy all this text stuff because we can, we can use this later all the way to right there, that brown one. Copy. And I'm going to open my clipboard right here because we're actually going to uh, do a, a big formula in just a moment, and we can copy some pieces and then paste them instead of having to type them out again. Now, let's come over here. Well, we got that there. And watch this. Here's a cool trick. I don't like going back and forth in a big formula between workbooks. And so I'm going to go get a workbook reference this way and copy it to the clipboard. I'm going to say equals. Go over to my other workbook. I'm going to do Control-Tab. I'm going to get this range right here. Click there, Control Shift Down Arrow, and then I'm going to hit uh, F4 once. So the dollar signs are just in front of the row references because get this, we need to look, we need the index function to look at this whole column, but when we copy it over, we need to, to move to this whole column. And so that's why we have the dollar signs only in front of the row reference. Now I'm just going to hit Enter, and it gives me a, a junk, some junk there. I click right here and hit F2 to put it in edit mode. And watch this. I'm going to copy this. Control C. See it over there on the uh, clipboard? So we can actually use it every time we need to re refer to that big range over there. We have it. Now I'm going to click Escape and Delete. Now I can build a little formula here. Or not a little formula. It'll be a big formula. Equals if. And we're going to have to somehow turn on and off this index formula when we get down so many rows. Right now, I think we have 30 over here, right? So when we get below 30, we need to turn the formula off. So here's how we'll do it. Rows, and we'll use our trick we've done many times to increment numbers in a formula. A dollar sign 2, because I'm in cell A2, colon A2. Right now, it'll give me row 1, because between Two, how many rows are there? Two and two? There's one. When we copy it down, this will be locked. This won't. So it'll give me two, three, four, five. If that's less than or equal to, and this is our count over here of records. I'm going to have to lock that everywhere. So I hit F4, comma. And now we're going to do the value of two, which is the index, the looking up. So index. The array is going to be this one right here. So I just click on it. And so there I get my workbook reference. Uh, again, Copy it down, but when we move over to the sales rep, we need the a reference over in that other workbook to move so there's no dollar signs in front of the column references. Now, comma and the row. We're going to have to use the small because we need, we're going to have a bunch of criteria, true and false, um, that'll tell us which uh, rows over in that other workbook we get our criteria from. So we're going to use the small. And the array is going to be if, and watch this. I'm going to paste this right here because we need to ask a question about that. But we need this one locked in all directions. So watch this. I'm just going to click inside of here and hit F4 and lock it in all directions. Um, so th that one right there, actually, that's not what we need. What we need is whoop, this one right here. There's our test right there. So if. And we have our text function and our concatenation. That's going to give us uh, our criteria here. And you can hit F9 and highlight it and hit F9 and see. Oh, yeah, that's the 09 September. Um, if we highlight this and hit F9, well, no, we better Control Z because if we do anything, it'll keep that hard coded. We could Control uh, hit F9 to highlight this, um, but I'm afraid it'll give us too many. We can try it F9. Oh, there it is. <laughs> It actually does evaluate it. That's like 800 rows. I'm going to Control Z. So amongst all of these, if we were to highlight these, this is going to give us a bunch of trues and falses, right? So watch this. F9. 
nothing but trues and falses. Control Z. So we have an if, and if we have a true or false, what do we want? Comma, and we want a row number. So I'm going to use row, and now I'm going to click on this again. Doop. And actually, I, I should have copied that to the clipboard lock, because I want these locked in all directions. So row, that'll give me all these rows. Remember, this first part of the if with the, with, is going to give us trues and falses. This right here will give us all the rows. Um, and then the tr when it's true here, um, it'll drop that row here into the small function. Now, the problem is, over there, it's row uh, 2 all the way to 817, I think it is. So we need to do minus row. Watch this. I'm going to still use this little thing I have stored over here and backspace because we need to have only A2. And I'm going to lock it in all directions. And then our plus 1. That gives us that'll, that little construct right there, if we highlight it and do F9, gives us 1 to 815, I think. So I'll hit F9. 1 to 814, Control Z. And so that's exactly what we want. Whenever we get a true or false that matches our criteria from the if, it'll pick up the row number here. Now, th now we have the screen tip here, and it's saying, hey, we have our value of true, so close parentheses. Now we get back to the small. And yeah, this whole construct here is going to dump a bunch of row numbers. But really what we want is we want the smallest row number, and then the second smallest, and the third smallest. So that's why we're using the small. So I'm going to highlight there. That's our incrementing number. And our screen tip, you can see right there, I put a comma and do our incrementing number. Now I close parentheses on the small. Index, we get back to there, but we don't need the column number there. Close parentheses. We get back to the if, and now I need to do comma, double quote. That is related to this true false at the beginning of the if. It puts a blank when it gets past the 30 row. Close parentheses. And this is an array formula using work book references, control shift enter. I got my fingers crossed. I'm going to copy it over here and then double click and send it down. Now that's pretty nice because this is uh, looking in that other workbook and we can just simply uh, uh, select our month and it extracts whatever records we want, right? So there's all the ones for six. That's 31. So we change it to 10 and of course it gives us a zero uh, query return because there aren't any 2010s. Okay, so that's how to do a formula that I've done before, but from a different workbook. All right, we'll see you next trick.